I am building a robot dog. In my previous video, I made this slack mechanism and I'm really proud of it. It uses a formal linkage, so the servo motors control joint angles remotely. It has this spring, so the robot can jump. And from what I can tell, this mechanism has only a single problem. It's fucking terrible. It's not rigid at all, you can move the foot 30 mm in any direction. If you use this for more than a few minutes, the bolt just get unscrewed and fall out. And these clamps are completely useless. With a bit of force, you can turn the foot out of place. So this is what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna go from a prototype to a proper functional part. Designing this leg took me over 50 hours. I actually split this video into 6 different parts, so I'm gonna start with part 1 and build the leg up as I go. I'm gonna start by making some tests and taking measurements, because I wanna compare the old design to the new one. The rigidity is obviously trash, let's say 30mm in each direction. The weight is 244 grams. If we subtract 140 grams for the two screw motors, we get about 100 grams. So all the plastic parts, the bolts, springs and the tubes weigh 100 grams. I want to do a test to see how long it takes for these bolts to fall out. I just coded a jumping sequence and I think it's not really good for the servo motors. Imagine if I let it jump like this for an hour. So I'm going to change it up to slow movement so it's going to move slowly up and down. Yeah, this should be much safer. Okay, I tightened all of the bolts to make sure they are secure and we can run the first test. My guess is that it's gonna take five minutes before it disintegrates. It's been five minutes, so let's check the damage. Yeah, this screw, it definitely got a bit unscrewed. You can see there's a lot of space in there. This screw is fine. Okay, I guess it's not that bad. Now I'm gonna try the jumping. <laughs> okay, and now it's broken. So that was about five minutes of moving up and down and nine minutes of jumping. Yeah, this is why I need a front locker. The first thing that needed an upgrade were the joints. This is the old design of the joint. You can see it's just a bolt and a 3D printed part with a hole. This design sucks, the plastic is just gonna wear out over time. Also, there's a lot of plastic here, so it's not gonna provide much rigidity. This is why I decided to use M3 spacers. These actually fit the M3 bolts pretty well, and if you look at it, the backlash is very low. I also decided I'm going to use long ones, so these are 30 millimeters, and that's just because of the geometry. So if I take this 10 millimeter one and I try the same test, the backlash is much bigger. In my design, I also made sure that the spacer is as close to the carbon fiber tube as possible. The more material there is between these two parts, the less rigid it's going to be. Compared to the PLA, the spacers and carbon fiber tubes have infinite rigidity. So this is where I'm going to press fit the M3 spacers. And you can see that I made sure there's not a lot of space between the spacers and the carbon fiber tubes. I actually put all of the plastics into these chamfers to the sides. For these tests and for the whole robot dog, I'm actually going to be using filaments which I got for free from Inslogic. Inslogic offers high performance 3D printing filaments just like this PA12 carbon fiber one. I actually got PLA Pro and TPU95A from them. If I compare this to my old filament, the PLA Pro has a tensile strength of 56 megapascals, while the stuff I was using until now has a strength of 34 megapascals. That's actually 65% stronger. I also got this TPU95A, so this is a soft filament which I'm gonna use for the robot's feet. So if you guys want to pick any high-performance engineering filaments, I'm gonna link them in the description and you can check them out. <laughs> the 
this joint is decent and there's basically no backlash, we still need to address the fact that the bolt is gonna fall out. And we're gonna do this with Prelocker. So I got Loctite 242. This is basically a glue. You put it onto the thread, let it solidify. After that, the bolt should be much harder to unscrew. You are still supposed to be able to unscrew it if you need to, but it's much harder so and a small vibrations it shouldn't unscrew it. I'm not sure how much thread locker I need to put into these heat set inserts. So I printed this part. I'm gonna fill these holes with the thread locker and see how much of it I need. It's been about 10 minutes, which should be enough to see the effect. So I'm going to try unscrewing these bolts and let's see what happens. By the way, for the robot joke, I'm gonna let it cure for about a day. Yeah, this is much harder. Oh, wow. Yeah, this one was really hard. And this one was the hardest. So what I found out is I wanna apply as much Loctite as I can. And it's much better if you apply it to both the hole and the thread. That's what I'm gonna use for every single bolt on the robot duck. The joints were fine, but I still needed some way to attach them to the tubes. Okay, let's talk about the clamps, because the old ones really sucked. This was actually one of the biggest problems of the prototype. So, these clamps, they provide no friction. You can just turn the leg out of its place. And if I wanted to tighten it, it just splits the part in half. So these are the two main fixes I needed to do. And surprisingly, it was pretty easy. The clamp looks like this, and I needed to print it in this orientation because this needs to be really strong. This is a problem because if you want to bolt this down, it tends to split the part in this plane. All I needed to do to fix this was to change the bolts. So previously I was using bolts with a countersunk head. If you try to tighten a part with these bolts, the force is gonna be distributed like this and it wants to split the part apart. I decided I'm gonna change to regular flathead bolts and I'll also edit a washer. So you should distribute the load evenly and it should press the part like this instead of trying to split it apart. I've been trying to record a demonstration. I wanted to basically show that if you screw a regular bolt with the washer, it doesn't split the part. And if you screw the countersunk bolt, it splits the part. Since I'm using the new filament, it's much stronger than I expected because instead of splitting this part, it pushes the heat set inserts out of this part, which is from the old PLA. So I'm just gonna show you the first examples. This is pretty thick piece of plastic, 100% infill, and it just smashes the part in half. But with these new bolts, I never had that problem. So I'm gonna use these bolts for all of the joints. With the stronger PLA, it seems that this is gonna become even less of a problem. I'm buying washers and I figured out something funny. So if I try buying M3 washers, 100 pieces, it costs about a dollar. And if I try to buy M4 washers, for a single fucking piece, it's still half a dollar. So I'm just gonna buy this and see if they actually ship a single piece. Are you tired of flying breadboards? How about swinging ones? Do you get comments like this? PCBWay has you covered. PCBs let you transform your shitty circuits into professional looking circuit boards. And with PCBWay, you can get 10 two layer PCBs for only $5. I'm actually gonna be designing some PCBs for this robot dock, so you'll see how you can design and order them. PCBWay also does milling, turning, free printing and manufacturing in general. Also, if you hate soldering like me, you can choose their PCB assembly services. So make sure to click the link in the description and check them out. Okay, let's talk about friction. You know, so the leg doesn't do this. So if you remember from high school, friction force is just the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Our clamp is actually circular and this is going to give us a friction torque. The most obvious way to increase the torque is just to increase the radius. So if we double the radius, we should get double the friction torque. And this kind of makes sense. If you try to hold some uh, small tube, you can't really hold it. But if you have a larger tube, 
like it's no problem. So that's why I went from 8 millimeters, I think, to 12 millimeter cube. The second thing we could do is to increase the coefficient of friction. I thought about using heat shrink tubing or some electrical tape, but it actually wasn't necessary. Increasing the diameter and using higher clamping force with uh, the bolt with the washer was just enough. And this actually holds so well that I can use just a single bolt. And this is gonna really speed up the assembly because if you look at this, there's a shit ton of bolts. Yeah, there's no way this is gonna twist. I think it's a really good design. Like, you can't really bend it. You can twist it very robust. I also forgot to mention that I added these holes, so you can see if the carbon fiber tube is all the way to the end. 20 hours in, and I could finally start designing the linkage. Let's look at the link design. First thing I did is I made sure that all of these tubes have the same diameter. This may sound obvious, but I didn't choose this on my previous prototype. That's because this rod doesn't actually take any load, so I thought it makes sense to make the diameter smaller, but I decided it's not worth it and I opted for a simpler design. This means that I can reuse these two parts on the rod as well. I made sure that link 2 and rod have the same length, because when I am cutting the tubes I don't have to worry about cutting different lengths. This meant I had to put more effort into designing these two upper clamps, but it was worth it, because now the design is much simpler. The next step was to decide how long I'm gonna cut these tubes. From the tests I did before, I know I want these link lengths to be about 250 mm. This lower tube needs to be longer to account for the 4 ball linkage. I also don't want waste material or have to do more cuts than needed. This is what the leg looks like. This is L2 and L3 and these are the same length. This maximizes the workspace. The leg actually has a 4 ball linkage. So the tube at the bottom is going to be 60 mm longer. Also, this rod is going to have the same length as L2. I chose this so it's simpler to cut. So now I can write down the equations. L2 and rod have the same lengths. Just to confuse you, I'm going to call this whole length L3, which is 60 mm longer than L2. When I'm cutting this single 500 mm long tube, I want to make just a single cut to get two tubes. The 500 mm long tube is gonna split into L2 and L3, which means I can solve for L2. And I get that L2 is 220 mm long, which means that rod is gonna have the same length and L3 is gonna be 280 mm long. For actually cutting the tubes, I printed this part. So you just put the tube inside of it you choose the length and you have this cut, which if you follow with a saw, you're gonna cut the tube in half. Before I cut the tubes, I actually want to show you my first prototype of this new design. The link lengths are half a meter long, which means that this leg is gigantic and the rigidity is still fine. So after I'm done making this robot dock, I'm definitely gonna make the lengths longer and test it just for fun. Yeah, this is pretty fucking terrible. Twenty hours of CAD modeling later, and I was able to assemble the leg with the new servo mechanism. Let's assemble the rest of this leg. As you can see by my previous prototype, this is complicated as fuck. I am slightly dead inside. Let's look at the rigidity. This is very good. I can definitely use this on the real dog. 
By the way, if you want to see what I'm up to or just like short read content, you can check out my Instagram. Now I got the old and new design side by side and I want to show you how they differ. Firstly, this one is obviously larger, which is great because it should be able to jump higher. With the prototype, it has only a single support. With the new prototype, it has double support for all of the joints. Also, with this old design, you can see that this link doesn't really take any load. There's so much backlash here that if I try tuning this, it doesn't really transfer all the way to this servo. So this servo takes all of the load. With this new design, I made everything stiffer, everything has lower backlash, and this tube has the same diameter as this one. So if I try moving the leg, I don't know if you can see it, but both of these servos move, which means that the load is more evenly distributed, although this servo probably still takes most of the load. And finally, the mechanism doesn't break anymore. So with the prototype, the parallelogram could easily break. With this new design, there's a physical stop, which prevents the mechanism from getting fucked up, basically. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I flipped this servo. So here the two servo motors are oriented the same, but here the one servo points up and the second one points down. And this is to increase the workspace of these servo motors. This motor, it can move all the way up and all the way here. So yeah, that's it. Right now I'm printing clamps to add the spring. And yeah, I'm gonna mount this onto the test stand. And finally, I could test out the new leg. I guess most of the stiffness is lost here because the whole servo hub is basically moving like this. This should disappear once I have it mounted on the robot. Let's see how much this thing weighs. 340 grams. 70 grams per each motor, so that's minus 140, which will give us 200 grams. This new mechanism is basically two times as heavy. All right, now I want to make the leg jump, so I'm just going to update my old code. What I need to do is update the link lengths. So I'm going to go into get and measure them. The leg rotates around this axis. So I'm going to go from this joint. I'm going to go to the center of this foot and then I'm going to go from here to this joint and now I should have my two lengths. So this is L2, 240 millimeters and L3, 243 millimeters. So now the code is updated and it should work. By the way, I still haven't actually solved the universe kinematics for this new mechanism. It's just my guess. I spent way too long on this video, so I'm going to solve it in the next one, I promise. I've just updated the code and I decided I'm gonna film my first test of the new inverse kinematics. I basically just changed a single fucking number, so I hope it's gonna work, but I have my doubts. Oh. Holy shit, it fucking works. Okay, now I'm going to be printing a new foot. I'm not going to use this shitty TPU from AliExpress. I'm actually going to use TPU 95A from InsLogic. So let's see how it's going to turn out. Very nice. Okay, I added the TPU foot, so let's do some testing. I want to see this thing jump. Well, that's kind of weak. Let's increase the stiffness. Yeah, there's a piece of wire that got unsoldered. I did not expect to be soldering at 3 a.m. That was kind of depressing. It technically jumps, it's just much worse than before. Yeah, I don't know, maybe there's too much friction in the mechanism, like it's definitely a bit harder to move. Maybe the spring is fresh. I'm gonna look at this at a different time. <laughs> Sorry for the uninteresting end. I wanted to make this jump much higher than before. So we're gonna look at that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Files are gonna be on the Patreon and I'll see you soon.